right, good afternoon, church. It's exciting to be in the house of God today. Why don't we all stand to our feet as we get ready to worship the Lord? Amen. Psalms 122 says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. What a privilege and an honor it is to come with my brothers and sisters to worship God in his house. So let's just, let's just let go and let God today. Let's open our voices and worship the Lord. Let him know that he's worthy of all things. It's exciting to be in his presence and all things can change in his presence. So pray with me. So Lord, we thank you for another day to be in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for meeting us right here. And we ask, Lord, as we come to you, Lord, to receive our praise. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on. Let's give him some praise. Hi, God. River of living water, a fountain that never will run dry. It's an open heaven, you're releasing, and we will never be denied. Oh, we will! Cause we're stirring up deep, deep wells. We're stirring up deep. Waters, we're gonna dance in the river, dance in the river, cause we're stirring up deep, deep well, we're stirring up deep, deep waters, we're gonna jump in the river, jump in the river, deep cries out, you deep cries out, you deep cries out, you deep cries out, you cry out to we cry out to you Jesus deep cries out to deep cries out to deep cries out to deep cries out to we cry out to we cry out to you Jesus I got a river of living water a fountain that never will run up. It's an open heaven, we're releasing, we will never be denied, cause we're stirring up deep, deep wells, we're stirring up deep, deep waters, we're gonna dance in the river, dance in the river, cause we're stirring Thank you. 
I want to see you. I'll sing it with me, church. And open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Yes, I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Cause I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Turning light. 
every heart I worship you
took a breath you breathe your life in me and you have been so so So, so good to me When I felt no worth You paid it all for me And you have been so, so kind to me I 
I just want to make you I just want to move your heart, God, and give you all I am. By your will, Lord, by your will, by your will, for your pleasure I exist. Yes, you are worthy. Church San Antonio today, this afternoon. We are blessed and honored to be with you today. Go ahead and turn to your neighbor and say, You are welcome here. We love you. Amen. Good stuff, guys. Wow. Amen. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Reclaim San Antonio. Come on, let's give God some praise one more time. It's good to be in his house today. It's good to be with all of you. Um, I always count it. I know I always say it. It's a privilege to be here with you, just in the presence of God with my brothers and sisters. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen all of you, just a couple days, I guess, but it seems like a lot, a lot longer. But welcome to all of you in person and welcome to you online as well on our Facebook Live and our YouTube channels. Amen. Uh, if that's you today on, on YouTube, can you help us out by subscribing to our channel, liking it, sharing it? Uh, I know that affects the algorithm to get the word out that God is doing something special here in San Antonio through this ministry. Amen. So God bless you for that. Um, if there's any first time visitors, I never want to forget, I'm looking, scanning the room. If there's first time visitors, raise your hand. I don't want to embarrass you, but I just want to welcome you. If not, amen. God bless you. We're all together in this. 
Amen. Just a couple of announcements as we get started today. Uh, but tomorrow, uh, uh, as most of you know, we're having a men's night. It's going to be in Austin. Uh, what we're doing is uh, we're meeting at my house at 4 p.m. If, if, if you're a, a man in this house and you want to be a part of that, come to my house at 4 o'clock. And then we're going to drive up to Austin and, and be a part of our sister church there at uh, Reclaim Austin. And it's just a bunch of men getting a hold of the Lord. We worship together. It's a short word, and I know it's short because I'm ministering. Uh, I'm going to share maybe 20 minutes, maybe, if that. Uh, but we'll see what the Lord does. We allow the Holy Spirit room to move, and it's going to be a blessing of a time. So that's tomorrow night if you want to be a part of that. And then uh, every other Tuesday night, and this one coming up is on the 27th, we have Bible study here at this building on the second floor. Uh, it's in the library right now. And, and this week coming up, we're going to be studying the book of Proverbs. And so what we do is, uh, uh, if you're familiar with the book, you, you read it before, try to read it as best you can. Uh, and then when you come in, we'll have a discussion around it. We have curriculum that goes with it. Uh, there's some questions on how God spoke to you. Uh, you know, what, do, what do you think God is saying here? You know, share your thoughts. And then we collaborate there. We just share what God is doing. Amen? Amen. And then on Wednesday nights, we meet right back here at uh, on 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights. It's just powerful. It's uh, an intimate time with the Lord. It's just us. We turn the cameras off and we come down here. And we pray for one another. We pray for specific needs. We pray corporately. If you have a loved one that you want to pray for, uh, let's pray for them. Uh, we've heard testimony and powerful praise reports when God gets a hold of one of our loved ones, whether it's a salvation, whether it's a healing. Oh, man, it's just so awesome to hear and to see the hand of God move. Amen. Amen. And then uh, uh, in, in August, most of you know, in August, the first week of August, August 3rd to the 6th, um, our mother church, Reclaim Network, they're going to be having uh, a yearly annual conference, yearly annual, annual conference, um, and it's called the REACH Conference. It's in Southern California. A number of us are going. If you want to go last minute, let us know. We'll give you information. But it's an always a powerful time. What it is, since we're, we're a church planning fellowship, and we have about 31 churches out of Paramount, California. That's where we came from. And it's a chance for all the churches to come back, give a report, and just share what God is doing. And then we just, it's, it's almost like a homecoming. You know what, you've been sent out, now we're coming back to see what God is doing. And you just see a tremendous move based on people. You know what, they stepped out in faith, they went out to a, to a new city or country, and now they're back sharing. But it's good to uh, be with your brothers and sisters again. It's a, it's, a, it's a reunion, and then you bring new brothers and sisters. So all of a sudden, they, the brothers and sisters there see your family, how it grew, and you go, and it's just a powerful time. It's a family reunion. So that's, uh, all, it's always in August. Last year, we couldn't do it because of the pandemic, and they didn't allow us to, to, to meet and gather, but this year, they're going to go big, and it's going to be an amazing time. So uh, I mean, I'm looking forward to it, but uh, I just wanted to share that. Let us know if you have any questions. Amen. Uh, with that said, we're going to receive an offering uh, uh, unto the Lord. So uh, uh, if you need an offering envelope, raise your hand, and uh, we'll get one to you. I don't know. Oh, there, there she is. Uh, we'll give you an offering envelope. Uh, we'll get one to you right now. Um, there's a number of ways to give. Um, you can put cash in the basket. And by the way, the basket will be up here. We're not at that point where we're passing the basket out yet, but uh, we have it up here. Uh, I promise I won't stare at you when you put your offering in there. I'll just keep my eyes away. And a uh, uh, number of ways to give. So give cash in there. Go to our website at reclaimsanantonio.com slash forward slash give, and you can give that way. Uh, we have a, a Tithely app as well. Just look for Reclaim Church San Antonio. Uh, there's a text to give number on the screen there, if you can see that, 833-403-5600. I'm surprised I can see that. Amen. I'm not that blind yet. Praise the Lord. Anyways, um, uh, would, would you give God some praise as my wife comes up to receive the offering? Well, good afternoon, everyone. So I did not expect my husband to go through the list of ways to give. I, I prepared in my mind, don't forget to tell him the ways to give. And um, so thank you for doing that. He threw me off a little here, though. <laughs> no. Um, so it's always a blessing just to share about, um, to encourage the church to, to, with their tithes and with their offerings. And so I did want to share this um, quote I came across. Um, I wish I could remember where I heard it from, where I got it from, but I have it written down. It says, uh, Give God what is his, and he will protect what is yours. And that's something for me that I've kind of learned through my walk with the Lord. And recently, um, to put a plug-in for the Bible study, last Tuesday we went through the book of Psalms. 
And um, it was really encouraging, and it took me down a little bit of a mem uh, memory lane because I went, um, uh, Rick encouraged us to share some psalms that ministered to us, and it reminded me of um, some of my favorite psalms that have ministered to me over my life. And one of them, um, my mom, uh, she was a single mom. She didn't always work. Things were kind of tough sometimes financially, but she had written this verse um, on a notebook piece of paper and her handwriting and she cut it up folded it up and all nice and neat and she taped it to our refrigerator and I know because every time I went to the refrigerator it was there and so I this verse became dear to me over the years because it, it ministered to me at some point finally and it's um Psalms chapter 50 um, I, I think she had only written verse 10 and skipped 11 and wrote 12 and she had it written in the King James version but I'm going to read the new King James <laughs> it says um at Psalms 50, uh, I'm going to read 10 through 12. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine, and all its fullness. And for me, growing up, I mean, every, you know, my mom, she's writing these verses everywhere around the house. And this one, I, I saw it all the time. You couldn't miss it. It's on the refrigerator. But... Um, I remember over the years just thinking, wow, when we went through tough times, not just with our finances, but with anything, um, it was a reminder that everything belongs to the Lord. And when we went through times in, in my life where I, you know, whatever the instance or circumstance was, I had to remind myself, no, I've given my life to the Lord. He will take care of me. And this other Psalm, um, it's 16, verse 5 through 6. I'm going to read that first. It says, Lord, you alone are my inheritance, my cup of blessing. You guard all that is mine. The land you have given me is a pleasant land. What a wonderful inheritance. So this verse, in verse 5, where it says, you guard all that is mine. Um, when I think about those two ver those two psalms and just the, the role they played in my life, where I see, you know, everything belongs to the Lord. It is. It's his. We can't, who are we to deny him what's his? So my life, when I give him my life, it's me trusting him with my life. When it comes to my finances, it's his he allows me the 90 percent you know the nine out of ten that's for for me to be a good steward over but it's all in in reality it's all his and i've seen in my life where i've held back anything where i've held back um myself where i've held back my time where i've held back my money things may have been good they may have gone well i may have thought i've spent my money well when it was really his but i can see where it wasn't right and when you trust god um, as a believer, I know we trust him with our, our, our life, our soul, our salvation. We can't go wrong. And the same holds true for our finances. We can't go wrong. And I promise you, every time I've tried to hold back or every time I've thought of holding back, this fear would grip me because I knew, like, you know what? My wisdom is not greater than God's wisdom. And this is even my money. It's his. And so um, I've seen over the years how he's always provided. It may not have been how I could have imagined, but he's supernatural, and I'd rather depend on his supernatural wisdom and strength than my own natural ability that's constantly failing. And if I'm talking to some human beings in here, I know we've all, we all know our natural ability and the limitation that has, but God's not like that. He's supernatural. If we put our faith in him, he'll do some supernatural things to take care of us. So I just want to encourage you guys, remember that it all belongs to him anyway, and, and trust him with it. Trust him with, you know, your life, with your family, your children. Trust him with your finances. So I'm going to go ahead and pray, and as my husband mentioned, um, there's ways to give, and we have an offering basket down here, so join with me in prayer. Lord, we come before you this afternoon, God, thanking you, Lord, for your goodness, God. We thank you, God, that you are mindful of us, Lord, that you take care of us, my God, that you protect your children, Lord God. You guard all that is ours, Lord, and I pray that every person here would be encouraged, God, in their faith, Lord, to trust you in all things, Lord God. I pray that you provide for every need, Father God, for, Lord, the desires of our hearts, Lord. And I pray that ultimately, Lord, you be glorified. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
love that song. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, you guys can be seated uh, as we get started today, but thank you. How about our, how about this worship team? Come on, let's give God some praise, man. They, they're on fire. We know the Holy Spirit is here, but they just set the atmosphere, and this makes me want to worship. Praise God, but amen. Thank you to my beautiful wife. Um, if you know her, she doesn't like to public speak, and she says, why do you ask me? And I say, because you do so good. And she's like, uh, I'm embarrassing her, but praise the Lord, I'm going to have her do more. <laughs> Amen. Well, thank you for being here, everyone. I'm excited about today. Amen. And, and, and this, this is word God put on my heart. Uh, it just really means a lot because when something ministers to me, I just pray that it ministers to you because I believe I'm hearing from the Lord when I'm looking for direction. I'm seeking his, his wisdom and understanding. And like, what, what do you want to say to your people? Because the reality, pastors have to spend that time with the Lord to see hear what he's saying to speak to his people. And I don't take it lightly because just you are very special to me, but you're more special to the Lord. And the Lord loves you. And I never, I never want to, you know, do the Lord in, in an injustice. And I, I don't want to do my best. So when I prepare, it usually takes me a few days sometimes. But um, this message today is called Something Out of Nothing. Something Out of Nothing. And, and we know the Lord always makes a way out. Sometimes, whether it's finances, sometimes it's relational, where you, you don't know how your marriage is going to work out and God brings it together because there's something there when you thought there was nothing. And he does that in a lot of different ways. And it always blows my mind because I've seen some people, even myself, in a desperate situation. How is my son going to be healed from this? They say everything's going to be wrong. He's going to have all these problems. But God said no. God said he's going to live. And he's going to live because I said so and I have the last say. And there's many things that happen where we're wondering how is this... I don't see a way out, Lord. I don't see anything. And I feel so alone. Are you even there? And we, all, and we say this, because God is silent, it doesn't mean he's absent. And so tonight, to this, this night, tonight, this morning, wow. Today, I'm going to share what the Lord has put on my heart because you may not think there's nothing there. There's, and um, I just thought of my sister Liz when I said that because I said I used a double negative. There's nothing there? Ain't nothing there? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm getting distracted here. But the Lord created something. And I'm going to read Psalm 77, 19 as I open up this message. So, the, so Psalm 77, verse 19 says, Your road led through the sea, your pathway through the mighty waters, a pathway no one knew was there. You led your people along that road like a flock of sheep with Moses and Aaron as their shepherds. So let's just pray as I start. So Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for meeting us right here. I thank you for your goodness and grace, Lord, in our lives. I thank you, Lord, because every time we come here, Lord, you meet us every time. And I pray today for your word. I pray, Lord, it ministers to every heart and mind. I pray, Lord, that you, your Holy Spirit flows through this place. Flows through this place, though. We feel a tangible presence of your spirit. And I pray, Lord, you would have your way in this place. Do what only you can do. Let your people hear your voice today, not mine. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So my text is going to be out of the book of Exodus. So if you have your Bible or you have a Bible app, you can turn there to the book of Exodus, uh, chapter 14. And I'm just going to read the first four verses there. So I'll give you some time to turn there. But I just want to share a little story before I get into it. But so most of you know, uh, I'm bivocational. So I have I have a job that I work as well, as well as the ministry. And I've been in sales for a long time, uh, 20, 20 plus years. Um, and, and, and God has just blessed me through that work. I never thought I was going to be in sales. I never thought that I, that I would speak in front of everybody because I don't like speaking in front of anybody. I get nervous. I get red. And it's very obvious when I get nervous. because My face gets all red. I'll, I have a very bad stutter, but somehow the Lord uses me to communicate. Um, there are times when I'm rushed, I'll start to speak, and sometimes I'll speak faster to get past the stuttering. But I'm telling you, my, when I would speak as a, as, as a kid in, in high school or whatever, I'd be so nervous, I'd be swaying, and all of a sudden I'd be over here, and then I'd be over here, and the, the teacher would say, Rudy, if you keep swaying, you're going to be, you know, facing the wall. And I'm like, well, I, didn't, I'm, I don't know that I'm doing that. I'm just kind of nervous. Uh, and so, but praise God, because I, I never thought this was going to be the path at first, but when I felt the calling, uh, I was all in. But in one of my sales jobs, I worked in neurosurgery for several years. Um, I was in pharmaceutical uh, uh, sales, so I sold drugs legally. Uh, I had a license to sell drugs, and then I moved into medical sales. And I just had a great opportunity to work with some of the top 
neurosurgeon in the world. I worked at Cedar sinai Hospital. I worked at UCLA Ronald Reagan. I worked at Kaiser Hospital in LA. That's a network there. And, and I worked in neurosurgery. And I was thinking, man, somebody like me, where I, I'm not a, a, a neurosurgeon by far, but God gave me the ability to remember certain things and, and tools and understanding how the body, you know, how they would use it. And so um, after I went through training, uh, uh, a lot of training, matter of fact, I learned some procedures where I would have to be in a, a neurosurgeon's office talking to them about my product and how it worked through their, their, through, their, through their case. I had aneurysm clips that were, if somebody was about to have an aneurysm rupture, the clips that would use to, uh, uh, to, to stop the, the vessel from, from bursting. Um, I had the tools to open up, do a craniotomy or to open up the skull. I had uh, uh, devices where they were called shunts, where if somebody had hydrocephalus, that's like water, uh, it, it's, it's cerebral spinal fluid that develops in the brain. Most kids, well, some kids, not most, but some kids are born with it. It releases the pressure uh, in their head through that valve. And so anyway, I don't want to go too far into that. But since I had this opportunity, I was a new believer at that time. And I would share with these surgeons about my new faith. And, you know, praise God. And I'm saying all this in, 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 a, in a meeting with some doctors. And they're just kind of looking at me. But my job was to take them out to dinner, kind of wine and dine them, right, without the wine. Uh, I wanted to take them out to a nice dinner and, 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 and explain what I did, what I sold. But they don't want to hear that when you're in dinner. They want to be casual. I hear all that stuff at work. I'm there 12 to 16 hours a day. You have my time. Let's talk about family. Let's talk about life. Let's talk. Praise God. And by the way, I went to church this Sunday, and the pastor was talking about that. Like, oh, you go to church, and then that would come up, right? Um, and so when I would talk to them about the Lord, it was falling on deaf ears, really. I could see them kind of zoning out, and just kind of like, just kind of humoring me, okay. But there was no interest in the Lord. Um, and so I would talk a little bit, then they would talk. But they would, when I would tell them about how God touched me, how the Holy Spirit was using me, they're like, yeah, but I don't believe anything I can't see or prove. And so I would always use the analogy, well, if we were outside having lunch, well, do you see those trees? Uh, what's moving them? And he would say, well, the wind. And I go, how do you know? Because I can see it. No, you can't. Well, you see the effect of the wind. Can you prove that? And so we would get in that discussion, and, I, and then they're like, wait a minute. And, and so I would tell you, you might not see the Holy Spirit, but you see the effect of the person changed. Because I'm, I'm today, I know where I was, and now I know where I am. My family can testify. So we would get into these discussions, and then, and then they, would, they would want to do it, you know, science-based or something like that. And I said, well, well, try to prove God doesn't exist. And we had these conversations. And so anyways, they would either get mad at me or uh, we would just kind of end the dinner early because I was this Jesus freak or something like that. But I was okay with that. I, I, I don't mind being a Jesus freak for the Lord. Amen. So anyways, during that time, I have some friends that are doctors now because of that. And one of the doctors, she's a family doctor. She gave me a book because we had, the doctors were coming to my, my uh, uh, I guess the mother church at Paramount, and they got saved. And she gave me a book because she knew I worked in neurosurgery. And she said, here's this book from a neurosurgeon who's a now believer. I'm like, oh, praise God, let me read this. And so I started to read the book, and, and in the, this, this book, this doctor never believed that God existed. He was an atheist, and, and so he just believed, you know what? Uh, whatever happens, people get healed because of the medicines, because of the training, because of luck. It just happened. He would just believe these things. And then he, but, but this doctor, he writes, he was very depressed because he knew. So his life started off where he was, he was adopted. And he struggled with that because he wanted to know his family. So he deal with this depression because he wanted to know why he wasn't wanted or why somebody would give him up. So he was struggling with that. So his, his roots were deep. And finally, he went to the adoption place, whatever, and he found out who his biological parents were. But he found out when he tried to reach out, they didn't want reconciliation. So his depression got deeper. They don't want to know me. They don't want to know me. So now he's, he's depressed, he's angry, and he falls into alcoholism. He's depressed. He does, and, and his life is, he's miserable. He's one of the top neurosurgeons. He's, he's making a lot of money. How many know money doesn't buy everything? And, he, and, he, and so he was living this life on the outside. People saw him as very successful. He's a top neurosurgeon. He's doing all these great things for mankind. The, and the Lord was using him many different ways that he didn't realize. But eventually his family would tell him, we know why you're struggling. You need to reach out to your family. And he, he came to find out after years of trying 
that it wasn't the family that didn't want a reconciliation, it was somebody blocking the reconciliation. So when he finally got through and talked to his biological sister, they finally met. And all of a sudden, everything was great, right? I know my family, but then he saw where he came from. They really didn't want to get rid of him, but there was circumstances that, you know, they had no choice. But even though he knew that, he was still trying to uh, understand why things happen in this world. When you have a great mind sometimes, or even you don't have to have a great mind, you wonder, there has to be more than this. There has to be more than this. When you struggle daily or, or when you go through problems, you want to know, why am I going through this? Why is this happening? And especially when you can't uh, understand it, you can't explain it, there's things that happen, happen that are wrong. So, um, I don't want, so I'll make this long story short, he got really sick. One day he was in bed, he woke up, and he got attacked by a, a, a it was a, a neuro case, a bacteria. It was a bacterial meningitis where it made him uh, uh, slightly paralyzed, but then it began to shut down his brain. So they went to the hospital, and a long story short, he was in the hospital seven days in a coma battling bacterial meningitis. It got so bad that at this point the doctors told his loved ones that the, the mortality rate for this disease is 97%. So he has 3% three ch chance to live. He's going to die. And so doctors and colleagues, they were his friends. They brought his wife and family and said, you know what, we should just stop treatment now because he, he, he's going to die. There's no way nobody comes back from this this long in a coma under bacterial meningitis. So talk to his wife, family, they refused, but they finally came to the point and said, let's just, let's just let him, let's see what happens. Take him off the medication. Let's just stop. And they said, okay, they were going to take him off all the medications. That same day he woke up and completely healed. No neurological effects, I mean, uh, and, and, uh, and, and brain damage whatsoever. So, every, so it blew the doctors away because they couldn't explain it. And what they said was, finally the medication worked the day they stopped it. So at that point, all they could say was a family believed was it was a miracle. It had to be a miracle, so the doctor wanted to know how this could happen. And, and I'm getting somewhere with this. There was something there where they thought nothing was there. They, they thought they're all, they lost all hope. They lost you know, any, any prayer if they were praying. Everything they wanted to do to try to help their husband, they couldn't. God has the last say. He had the last say, and sometimes when you think nothing is there, God is up to something. You never know, but a lot of times scientists and doctors, they don't believe that spirituality can coexist. They believe, you know, either you believe in science or you believe in the spiritual realm or spirituality. You can't believe in both. It doesn't. But doc this doctor said, you know what, they're mistaken. We have been mistaken because I've seen God, or I've seen heaven. I've spent time, when I was in a coma, God spoke to me, God spoke to me. So he started to share his thoughts, what God spoke to him, and he started sharing these visions of what he had. He was just sharing, he goes, I, I didn't feel like I was dying, I was aware of you watching me, I was aware of all these things, but God was showing me things. And he's a, a neurosurgeon saying, I just, I didn't, you know, he was explaining the, the, the beauty of everything that was surrounding him. He was sharing a vision that God gave him and the mission that God gave him to share that God is alive, that he's alive. And so at that point, when I, when I was, this, the story was happening, when, when, when I was reading this book, uh, my son Ezekiel was in the hospital. And a lot of you know his story. He was born one pound. And, I, I, and there was a, a sign on the NICU uh, wall and that I loved it because I always saw it and I needed a miracle because he was dying. My son Zeke was dying. And, and there was a, a, a quote by Albert Einstein, and it read this. There are only two ways to live your life. One is though nothing is a miracle, and the other is everything is. I chose to believe that everything is. God is in control. He's in control of all things. He's in control of my situation. He's in control of your situation. When you think there's nothing there, God is up to something. God is up to something. And in, in your circumstance, you don't understand why Allow God to move. Don't hinder God by, by feeling, like taking yourself out of the equation and say, I'm not going to go to church. I don't want to talk to anybody because I know it hurts. God is lining things up for you. He has the last say in every situation. We know this, that there's power in testimony. When somebody shares the goodness of God, when they say, God did this, we thought this is the worst thing was going to happen, and God healed my loved one. Or I didn't know how I was going to pay this bill, but all of a sudden I got a check in the mail. God, I don't know, my marriage was on the rocks, it was over, but all of a sudden something happened inside, and our marriage was restored. All those things can happen in an instant. We don't know how, we just know that sometimes it feels like nothing's there. 
But God says there's something. So this message today is on something out of nothing. And so uh, if you turn your Bible there, I give you some time to get your Bible out or your Bible app and um, Exodus chapter 14. I'm going to read the first four verses and I'm going to be reading out of the New Living Translation. The scripture will be up there on, as well. So I'm going to start off in verse 1. It says, then the Lord gave these instructions to Moses. Order the Israelites to turn back and camp by pi Hathroth between Migdal and the sea. Camp there along the shore across from Baal Zephon. Then Pharaoh will think the Israelites are confused. They are trapped in the wilderness. And once again, I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will chase after you. I have planned this. Listen to me. I have planned this in order to display my glory through Pharaoh and his whole army. After this, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. After this, the Egyptians will know I am the Lord. Can I tell you that sometimes in our lives we question God and why, why, why? But the truth is he may say to you, after this, you will know that I am the Lord. I'm there for you. I'm with you. I'm not against you. I, will, I can turn the impossible and make it possible. And so, to, so this story right here relates, it, God put it on my heart because a lot of times uh, we're in a situation we don't know how we got there or we thought we were following God's will for our lives and we see a stumbling block. God, I've been going to church, I've been doing all these things, but all of a sudden, life is hard, life is tough. Maybe that wasn't your plan. Hold on. Maybe God's allowing this because he's going to display his glory. And so in this situation, we know the story, uh, Pharaoh let the Israelites go. He let them go. He let Moses take God's people, and they were going, and, and, and they were probably, you know, sh uh, shouting, you know, just the, all praises to God because God... They were freed now from the bondage of slavery. They were freed from all that torment. They were free to go. So as they were going, and, and, and they're going to a place, and I imagine these millions of people coming, and all of a sudden they're at the Red Sea, a stumbling block. And they're like, okay, uh, okay Moses, what's the plan now? You can't cross. And so they know they're within distance where the Pharaoh can see them, right? So they're there, and what does God say? Tell them to turn back. Tell them to turn back. And they're probably thinking, What? Go back. Go back to what? Why are we going to go camp right here? Because all of a sudden, we're going to camp here. Pharaoh's going to be watching us. He's going to know we're here. He's going to think that we're confused. He's going to think that we're lost, that we can't go anywhere. So what's going to happen? They're confused, right? You might think, why should they be confused? God let them out. God freed them. Why could they get confused? Why don't they just trust God? Why, why don't they? You know what? At least they're free, right? All these things we question when you read the Bible. But then all of a sudden, we're in church and the pastor says something, or he asks something, or he says, let's do this. You go, ah, maybe I don't agree with that too much. Why is he saying that? Turn back. And so sometimes in our lives, we have to think about that. When, when we're walking with the Lord, we're going, you know, we, we know, what, you know, we know we believe in him and he's in control of all things. We say it. We say it all the time. Lord, you're in control. Lord, you're in control. You're in control. And we're, we're shouting praises from the mountaintop. We're doing all these things. And all of a sudden we see something that we don't like or it doesn't seem right. And we're not sure we understand things anymore. I imagine the, Egypt, the, uh, the Israelites felt the same way when Moses said, turn back and camp there. What, what was going through their minds? They're probably, tell, they're probably telling Moses, why do we listen to you? Why do we listen to you? What, what did you do to us? We were better off as slaves. And they're complaining and complaining. Does that sound familiar sometimes? When we don't understand things that are going on and what God is doing, maybe we don't like the trial that we're in. We're like, God, what are you doing? I was better off in my old life. I was better off at my old house. I was better off in my old job. I was better off. And all these things, we start saying all these things because we don't understand because of the discomfort that we're in. Because of the discomfort, you know, we're going through things, we may, we may complain. And sometimes when we bring that to church, we find everything wrong with church because we're in a bad mood or we're going through things and, and we don't like our circumstance and we walk into church and, oh man, the music's too loud today or the music's too low. Live stream is off. It's not working right. I don't like that song. They play it every time in the river. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you, you, you know, that's going to be our, that's going to be our theme song one day in the river. That's the only song, well, that's the only song that I could play before. <laughs> I was the weakest link, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. But our situation can bring discomfort. It can. I, I'm not, I, I don't discount 
your situation. When you're in a bad situation, it's not comfortable. It doesn't feel good to be in those situations. And sometimes, and sometimes the devil's attacking us. And sometimes it's not, he's not. Sometimes we're putting ourselves there. But the reality is it doesn't feel good when you're going through it. It doesn't feel good, you know, and, and, so, and so we know that we're to cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, help me through these times. But could, I, could it be, and we'll think about this, that God is allowing that in order to display his glory in your life, in you and through you. Maybe he's allowing that for some reason. And you see at that point when the Egyptians were in hot pursuit because the Egyptians saw that. So they're, they're going after them and, and, and they're getting closer. And, and the Israelites are there camping. And, and what are they going to do? They're getting closer and closer and closer. And you know, I mean, they're freaking out, right? They're scared because Pharaoh's army is coming to, to capture them, to kill them, to do whatever he wants to them. But at the right moment, God displayed his power like he usually does. God is never late. Amen. He's rarely early, I know that for sure, but he's right on time. And so what did he do? If you know the story, what did God do at this point? When the Pharaoh was coming, all of a sudden, God parts the Red Sea. A magnificent presence of his power right there. He opens the Red Sea and they go through. And look at what it says in Exodus chapter 14, verse 25. It says, the Egyptians shouted, let's get out of here, away from these Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Can I tell you, at the right moment in your situation, you might have wanted it early, but it's not going to be late. It's going to be right on time when the Lord says, because his time is good in your situation, call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon him and trust in him that he's going to show up right on time. Not your time, his time. It's good. He knows what he's doing. Our plan might think, it may seem like our plan is a great plan, but it's not better than God's. He will, dis he will display his power See, sometimes, and maybe even now, you're uncertain what God is doing. You may be uncertain what God is doing. And, and whatever it is in your life, we all go through something sometime. None of us, none, none of us are free from a trial or circumstance. It's going to happen the one we don't like. But a lot of times, God, if God brought you to that point, he's going to lead you through it. He's going to lead you to that point, but it's you have to trust him through it. God is leading you through it. There is something there when you thought there was nothing. Maybe you couldn't see it or nobody else could. And I read this scripture when I first started. Psalm 77, verse 19, it's right up there. The road led through the sea, your pathway through the mighty waters. A pathway no one knew was there. No one knew was there, but there's a pathway. And in your situation, there's a way out. God is doing something, but we have to wait on his timing because it's perfect. We can't get upset. We can't, you know, blame God. Where are you at? You're not here. You know what? I said this earlier. It may be that he's silent, but he's not absent ever. It may look impossible to get through. You may not see the pathway and others might not see it either. But there is a pathway. God, if God brought you to it, he'll, let, he'll lead you through it. Amen? See, and, God, and God works in ways we don't understand. And I... And I I remember when I, was first, when I first came to church, I wanted to know the Bible. I wanted to know what God was saying. I wanted to hear from him. Uh, and I, and I, I've never heard from him audibly. I'll be honest with you. I've never heard audibly. I've heard through his word. I've heard through other people. I've heard God, people have talked to me, and, and it's been a word from the Lord, and it really encouraged me. Can, can I tell you that the devil won't give a word to you that will encourage you? So, so, so I, I wanted to know, and I would get upset with some of my leaders, and I would say, I want to know what this means. And then they, show, then they opened the, the book of Isaiah up to chapter 55. And, I, and that, that, that verse bothered me so much because it, it wasn't satisfying to me. In 55 verse 8, if it's up there, Isaiah 55, 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. I'm like, oh my gosh. All right. I just have to trust him then. We just have to trust him. Amen. We have to trust the Lord in every situation. He will make a way. See, a lot of times, you know, you've been asking God over and over and over, how, why, where am I going to, when am I going to get through this? But you have to know that God is for you and not against you. And this theme scripture for this church, this ministry, I've always believed this, that God is doing something new, something special. And when you think about that, when you read his word, he says, I've already begun. And, and how do you see it? How do you see that he's already begun? He says, don't you not, don't, do you not see it? I've created a pathway in the wilderness for you. I couldn't see that. It takes faith. Only God can create something out of nothing. You may not see it or anybody else, but the Lord is good and he's faithful. 
He's faithful. There are times in your life and through your trials, it may seem easier to give up or to give in to temptation. It may, it may seem easier not to come to church. It may seem easier just to skip altogether what God is doing in your life. But can I tell you, the easy way is not the Lord's way. The easy way is to give up. The Lord's way is to stick through him and trust him. Trust him. Anytime you're down and out, anytime temptation looks really good, anytime you want to give in, anytime you might say, man, the slave life that I live was better. When I was in the world, it was better. Can I tell you that's a life in the pit of hell. The Lord will show you a way out, but you have to call upon him. You have to pray. You have to read. You have to do things of God and not look at the past because the past is where it should be in the past. You can remember the past, but don't live there. Don't live in the past. It's not good for you. God brought you out of that for a reason. And he'll always make a way out of your situation or your temptation. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says, The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation. Hear me now. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. When people say, oh, I was just tempted. You didn't, you didn't call upon the name of the Lord then. Because he will show you a way out. That's a promise. He will show you a way out of your temptation. I was just tempted. I was overwhelmed. I, you know, I just gave in. That doesn't mean God is not faithful. He was there. Sometimes God allows us to be in those positions. He allows us to be there. And he creates something out of nothing. When you thought you, it was all, all hope was lost. And he made... And, he, and the answer was there, but you chose the easy answer. And you know what? A lot of times we get upset because God doesn't tell us everything. You know why? I'm going to tell you why. Because you can't handle the truth. We can't handle the truth. I'm part of that. I've heard, I've heard it said this way, that God only lights up a little bit of the pathway to guide you through it. He doesn't want to show you the whole journey, the whole process, because you might change your mind. God said you're going to be a pastor. God says you're going to be a worship leader. God says you're going to do mighty things for God. Praise the Lord. But you have to go through this trial, this trial, this trial, this trial, and then I'll be glorified. You probably say, ah, I'll skip that. I'll skip that one, right? Look what the Bible says in Exodus chapter 13. Verse 17. When Pharaoh finally let the people go, God did not lead them along the main road that runs through Philistine territory, even though that was the shortest route to the promised land. God said, hear me now, if the people are faced with a battle, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So what that says to me is that, you know what, God's going to lead them through. And they might not go the easiest route or the shortest route. He knows what's good for us. And it says there, if the people knew they were going to go through a battle, or they were going to face a battle, they might change their minds and not leave. So what has God done in our lives when he's brought you this far and he's promised you've heard from God, somebody's prophesied in your life, God's going to do this work in your life. Many people will be saved because of you. Many people are going to love the faith that you have. You know what they say about people with great faith? They've had some great trials. And God has brought them through. So God, so just remember that God won't, sometimes people say, I want to know everything, God. I want to know everything right now. I want to know what I'm going to go through so I can plan for it. God said, man, you might change your mind. You might change your mind if I told you that you were going to have to do this. Can I tell you that's what happened to me? When my, when I, <laughs> my wife's not in here. When uh, I was trying, I was dating my wife, trying to, trying to, trying to hook up, uh, trying to make her my woman. Um, <laughs> She told me, and I had no, I had no, I hadn't heard about being a pastor or anything. I just wanted to go to church to get better. But my, my eyes were on her, and she said, well, uh, what, what's your calling? I'm like, I'm here. <laughs> I'm in church. That's my calling. And she's like, well, God, I was prophesied over, and, the, and, 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 and he told me that God was going to bring a, ma a mighty man of God in my life that was going to pastor and lead a congregation one day, lead a people one day. In, my, in myself, I'm like, that's not me. But I was telling her, that sounds cool. <laughs> that sounds cool. Sounds like a good man. I don't know if it's me, though. We were talking about this. Oh, no, we'll get into that. I told her, babe, why, why did you talk to me? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I did say that. Why would you talk to me? But anyways, praise the Lord, she did. And, but you know what she said? I said, babe, why, why, would, why would you talk to me? And she said, God wouldn't let, allow anything bad to happen to me and my choices. I was like, dang, you're holy. 
she knew she knows the Lord's voice. And she said, she, and I knew she had her choice. She, I mean, I, I was a late comer in, in church, and, and she, she just said, I knew God would not allow me, uh, allow things to happen in my life that way. The man that I chose would be the right man of God. I'm like, man, the pressure. <laughs> the pressure on me. But God created something when I felt I was nothing. God created something out of nothing. Can, and, and, and a lot of times we do that to ourselves. Our whole perspective in life changes when we're in pain. When we're in pain and we're struggling and we're in a hard place, we try to get creative and help out the Lord. If I just do this, I'll be okay. But the Lord didn't say that. If I just go this place, or if I just do this, if I work longer hours, I'll miss church, but I'll make more money. The Lord said, be in church. Be with your people. Be, be with my people. Watch what I can do. See, the will of God seems tough at times, and, and I'm not discounting that. The will of God seems tough sometimes. Hold on, Tim, I got a good point. No, I'm just joking. Sorry, brother. <laughs> the will of God seems tough at some times, but it will never be where his presence is not. The will of God may seem tough at times, but it will never be where his presence is not. You hear me? A lot of times we don't want to be in God's will. Sometimes we feel like there's pressure there, but his presence is there. His will for your life, his presence will be there. Amen. He is always available to help you and strengthen you. I wrote four things about our trial, and I'm wrapping up here. Um, four things. In your trial, remember God has allowed it. In your trial, remember God has allowed it to use it for his glory. In your trial, God's presence is with you. You can always depend on his presence. You hear me there? God's presence is with you. You can always depend on it. In your trial, learn from it. We say there's a lesson to be learned. Grow through it. In your trial, God's timing is perfect. Every trial has a beginning and every trial has an end. God will use your trial for his purpose and glory. We, we hear countless testimonies of how good God is, what he's done in the Bible. He's given somebody a promise and he's fulfilled it. You know, we think of the book of uh, uh, Sarah, the promise of a child at a late age, and he blessed her. You think of the story of Joseph, the, the, the blessing on his life, the dreams that he received, and he had to go through hardship, sold into slavery, prison, and God raised him up. You think of the story of David, King David. He was under Saul and was tormented, and, and, and Saul wanted to take him out. And God raised him up to be king. See, God allows all these, all these trials in our lives. He allows them and then he allows us to see the outcome. That's why I say, you know what? There's power in testimony because you've been through it. You're going through it. Somebody else has and somebody else will go through it. It's a, there's power in testimony. Why does God do this? Why does he, why does he share these, these stories in the Bible? Because he, he doesn't want you to be surprised. He wants you to know that he's faithful, that you can count on him. He's there for you. If he led you there, if you're there right, right now, you're there in that spot. God led you there. He'll see you through it. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 says, Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through. As if something strange was happening to you. He wants you to know. Things are going to happen in this fallen world, but you got to stand on his word, stand on his promises, trust him again, trust him again. Say, Lord, I trust you. You did it once and you'll do it again. You are there for me. You're not against me. Trust him. God wants you to have peace because you have victory. John 16, 33, I have told you all of this. Why? So that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because what? I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. You have, that's why we say this, that we don't fight for victory, we fight from it. You already have victory in your situation. If you're wondering what's next, if you're wondering what decision to make, seek God. Make God the center of your decision. Make God the center of your plans. Make God the center of your family. Make God the center of your relationship, your job, your finances, all these things. Make God the center of it. You won't go wrong. Don't focus on your circumstance. Focus on the outcome, because you have victory. Focus on the outcome. It's okay to ask God why. You hear me? It's okay to ask God why, but a better question is who? Who's with me? Jesus is with me. You can ask God why, but I'd like to know who's with me. 
if you understand who's with you, you can stand the why. If you believe that he's with you, you can understand, you can handle why. Because God may, God may be, he, he might tell you why. You ask God why, he may tell you. Because I'm tired of you sinning. That's why. Oh, you want to know the truth? That might, be, that might not be the reason. You might be living for God and you, and you might be doing the best you can and you're still struggling because something out of your control has happened because the fallen world we live in. You know what? We may be overwhelmed with different things. But I'm saying, God, why? And you can do that. Know the who that's with you. God will create something out of what you think is nothing. Amen. So I'm going to close with this. I know I'm closing. I keep saying that, right? You may feel like it's tough right now. There's no way out. But that pathway I'm talking about is there. That pathway is there. God led you there for a reason. He's doing something special. He's doing something new. It may not feel like it at this point. God led you there. He's going to lead you through it. Can I tell you how much he loves you? See, sometimes we, as believers, we don't really receive that love because we're used to human love. We're used to human love falling short. We're used to people telling us they love us, but showing us differently. We don't, we don't, when somebody says, I love you, you're like, yeah, yeah, I've heard that before. Oh, I love you too. Real casual, right? Real casual. But all of a sudden they turn their back on you or, or they let you down or they hurt you or they didn't come through for you. Do they really love me? So when I say Jesus loves you, that's a love that will never let you down. That's a love that will see you through. That's a love that you can count on. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12 says, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds, and I will remember no more. A lot of times we don't want to receive the love because of our situation. We don't like that we're in. A lot of times we're, we've been doing things over and over and we're trying to get better, but we're still falling short. The enemy will keep us away by putting shame on our minds, but there's no condemnation for those who belong in Christ Jesus. In Romans chapter 8, 1. We have to know who God is. Receive his love. Anytime we fall short, which we will, you can always come to the Lord. You can always come back to the Lord. You can always seek him and you will find him. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know what happens when you ask the Lord for forgiveness? A load and a weight comes off of you. Because sometimes in our minds we'll harbor all these thoughts, we'll harbor, we'll carry the burden of, of all the stress in our lives, of the past, of unforgiveness that we hold for somebody else, bitterness that we hold for somebody else, just an anger that we hold for somebody else. All those things will hold on. But then when you hear God's word spoken and you hear his promise of forgiveness and he's just, and all these different things, why not let that weight fall off? Why not give that to him and say, I need forgiveness. Now, I might not be speaking to anybody in here, but I know the Lord is. There are times in our lives when we've been struggling too long, but we're standing firm because God made us strong. But it's okay to be weak because that's where you, the Lord's strength is perfected in our lives. When we say, Lord, I need you because I can't do this anymore myself. I need you. I need you. I'm going through something and I can't do it myself. I'm struggling right now in my mind and I can't do it myself. I, I, I don't know what to do anymore. I've known you a while or I've known you a short time and I've heard you can do it and I've seen you do it, but will you do it again? Yes. And so today, today I'm going to pray as we worship the Lord, as we close this service. God is good, and I'll tell you, church, he loves you. He loves you so much. He knows everything about you. He's heard every cry, every tear has been collected. He knows what you've suffered from. He knows your past. He knows everything about you. 
and he's brought you here today to be in his presence. We could have been anywhere else today, but the Lord made a way. There, there could have been so many things that distracted you, hindered you from getting here, but you got here. And you're in the presence of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There's no better place to be but in his presence. This is where breakthrough happens. Allow yourself to be vulnerable. Allow yourself to receive God's goodness. Allow yourself to receive God's best. Allow yourself to receive the forgiveness of God. Allow those things in your life because he's good. But all I can say are the words he's given me. Nobody can make you choose but you. When there's a time for prayer, when there's a time for worship, you choose whether you worship or pray. It's up to you. So I'm going to pray. And if you would, if you would pray with me, if you would bow your heads and close your eyes and in reverence to the Lord, in reverence to the Lord, Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is here. Allow yourself just to get lost in the presence. Hear my voice today. Jesus loves you. He knows what you've been through. He knows you've been tired. He's heard every question. Why? When? How? He's heard everything you've asked, every prayer request in your secret place, in your alone time with him. He's heard it all. And you've asked, where have he been? And he said, I'm, I'm right here next to you. I'm right here next to you. I've always been here. I know what you've been going through. I know the struggle. I know all those things. I still love you. I still love you. And I want to give you my rest, freedom, those things that you desire. So I'm going to make this call. And if that's you, you can respond. If not, you know what, we'll just pray together. If you're in this place and, and maybe uh, you've never asked the Lord for forgiveness or to come into your heart, I want to make that opportunity. Or if that's you, and you have done that before, but you're just away from God right now. You feel like in your heart, physically you're next to God, but in your heart you're away. And it's a struggle to come to church sometimes. It's a struggle to read his word. It's a struggle to pray. God knows. There's no shame in admitting that. But if that's you, if you want to pray, I want to pray with you. If you've never received the Lord in your heart, ask him for forgiveness. Or if you feel in your heart, you know what, you might be here physically, but you've been away in your heart. We always want to make that opportunity to be right with the Lord in the sight of the Lord's eyes. If that's you and you want to pray today, would you raise your hand? Amen. I see that hand, brother. You can put it down. Anybody else? Good. Amen. I know sometimes we don't like to admit that. We just want to make sure, you know, everything's all right in all our lives. But it's important. It's important to pray. And I'm going to open the altar, and I want you to come pray with me. Because I know there's power in prayer. I know there's power in it. But before I do, you know, I, I just want to make sure, if that's you, if you feel you're away from God in your heart right now, be a part of this prayer. If that's you, just raise your hand, and we'll pray that together. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to say this prayer. Brother, would you look at me over here? My brother over here? I'm going to say this prayer. Just repeat it after me. Whoever wants to join in, let's just pray. Can we stand to our feet? Can we stand to our feet? I'm going to say this prayer. And, and, and I say this prayer all the time because I, I fall short all the time. We all fall short. But it's the prayer of salvation. Even though you've received him before, sometimes in our hearts we feel like we're away. Like we're away. And I always want to be in right standing with God, no matter what. And he's faithful and just to forgive us every time and make us new in our hearts. So if that's you, if you want to pray as well with us, I'm just going to pray this prayer. Repeat it after me. 
But don't say it to me. Say it to Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart and be my Lord and be my Savior. From this day forward, I will serve you in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's pray. So Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this time, God. I thank you for my brother, Lord, as he lifts his hand to you, God, to pray, Lord, because you know what? It doesn't matter where we've been, but we're in the right place today in your presence, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for his heart today, his openness, Lord, to just to receive you, Lord, to accept you, Lord, to know that he needs you, God. I pray for everyone here, Lord, that prayed that prayer, Lord. I just pray, Lord God, that, that they would feel the weight lifted from their minds, the weight lifted from their thoughts, and they would receive the freedom that you give today. Oh, Lord, I pray today, Lord, just the newness in them, God, that they could walk, Lord, forward today, knowing they walk with you. That they, anything they would hold on to would, would be left here, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, just for a move of your spirit in their lives today. Do what only you can do. Oh, Jesus, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Praise the Lord. We're going to worship right now, but I would ask, if you want to pray, would you come up and, just, and come up right here? Let me, let me pray with you. It, you know, it blesses me when I pray with others. So if you can come up here and pray, pray with me. I will pray with you. I'll pray for you. I will pray with somebody else if you, have, if you want to intercede. But come up to the altar. You're free to worship up here and just praise God. Amen. Just let him have it today. Just lift up your voice to him and let's worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, let's worship together.
exalt thee. And I exalt thee. I exalt thee. And I exalt thee. Oh, when I sing, you are worthy. Come on, church, why don't we give the Lord some praise in this place today? Just before we dismiss, I have a couple of announcements for the men. Tomorrow, as a reminder, we'll be meeting at Pastor Rudy's house for a men's night in Austin, Texas. Every Wednesday, we gather here for prayer, so make sure you guys are a part of that. But before we leave, why don't we just pray? Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this word. Father, we pray that we practice what you've, been, that what you've taught us so we can be more like Christ. And so we could bear more fruit to, for your kingdom. Heavenly Father, I pray for traveling mercies as we leave this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. You guys have a good day.